Hello there, my name is Miles Dungan, and in 2009 I wrote a book called Conspiracy Irish Political Trials for the Royal Irish Academy. It was a series of trials, a series of chapters on some of the most important trials uh, during the period when Ireland was under the Union, starting with the trial of Robert Emmett, going on to the trial of the journalist John McGee, then moving uh, in 1844 to the state trials in the aftermath of the collapse of the repeal movement of people like Daniel O'Connell. Um, the Mantrasna murders, the infamous Mantrasna murders of 1882, the Phoenix Park murders of the same year, the two only separated by a matter of days, the um, cross-examination by uh, Pickett, Richard Pickett by Sir Charles Russell uh, during the Parnell Commission, and then the courts martial and the trial of Roger Casement and uh, courts martial of the 1916 leaders and the trial of Roger Casement. So running the gamut basically between uh, Robert Emmett in 1803 and the uh, 1916 rebellion, the Easter Rising. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to read an extract from the opening of the chapter on the Invincibles, the murders of Cavendish and Burke, of uh, Lord Frederick Cavendish, the new Chief Secretary, just arrived in Dublin that day, 6th of May, 1882, and the Under Secretary, T.H. Burke, who were murdered by a number of men, half a dozen men, while they were walking uh, through Phoenix Park. And uh, it begins by looking at um, what happened on that day to the man who cracked the case uh, leading to the trial that I write about in this particular chapter in the book, that man being John Mallon. Um, and it goes as follows, the opening goes as follows. It was a tight and uncomfortable pair of new boots that played the crucial role in one of the most savage political crimes in Irish history. The feet being pinched by the recently purchased footwear belonged to Superintendent John Mallon of G Division of the Dublin Metropolitan Police. The tall, bearded policeman walked from his office in Dublin Castle on a pleasant Saturday evening in early May 1882 for a belatedly scheduled meeting in a busy Phoenix Park. Little subversive activity taking place in the capital city escaped the attention of the resourceful Ulster Catholic detective. With his extensive underworld contacts, Mallon was an invaluable asset to the DMP. He'd been selected in October 1881 for the delicate task of arresting Charles Stuart Parnell and conveying him to Kilmainham Jail without causing a riot. This he had managed to accomplish successfully, albeit with the gracious cooperation of the Irish party leader. Mallon, who had a unique talent for intrigue and an educated nose for intriguers, had received a message from an informant named John Kenny, who wanted to meet him at about 6.30pm near the Viceregal Lodge, now Orson Uchtheron. He was on his way to the rendezvous when he encountered a plainclothes G Division colleague. Mallon told the detective that he was on his way to meet Kenny. He then intended to double back and make for his home on the North Circular Road. He was advised, excuse me while I turn the page, against it. His colleague had spotted a number of well-known subversives in the park and had grown alarmed when he saw Mallon. He suspected the most celebrated, most admired and most reviled detective in Dublin was about to walk into a trap. The superintendent was handed a revolver and advised to make his way directly home. Mallon prevaricated before agreeing to leave Kenny to his own devices. The annoyingly painful boots were as much a factor in that fateful decision as any fears of a Fenian ambush. Had Mallon continued on his journey, perhaps accompanied by his colleague, forewarned and well-armed, events might have taken a very different course on that sultry and sanguinary evening. So that's the opening section to one of the chapters of Conspiracy Irish Political Trials, written in 2009 for the Royal Irish Academy. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.